as the way we interact uh, with other players, um, you know, it, it's interesting. A lot of young musicians play like 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 a horse, or at a horse race, where they have blinders on, and they're just going straight ahead, and they're playing their part in their lane, and not really listening to what's going on around them. Um, you know, that eventually, as you become a better musician, you realize that it's a conversation, even if it's not improvised, even playing written music. Um, like playing a part, if I'm playing a melody and then I'm playing with the saxophone, I have to be listening to the saxophone. And uh, it's, it's interesting how there's a kind of an inherent understanding. It's almost like talking to each other. Even though we're both reading the same music, we're looking at something. I'm listening, they're listening, and we're trying to blend our sounds together in a way. And sometimes even body language, you know, uh, like you see classical musicians sometimes and they're going, they're moving when they're playing. They're, they're, they're creating body language while they play. And, and uh, what, what I do you know, in, in this section, like if I, if I want to make sure we all come in together, for instance, I don't have to say anything. I'll, we'll just go like the way we breathe. And we all we communicate that way. It's not I'm just thinking about I have to breathe. I'm also trying to, to make sure I'm communicating with the person next to me that we're playing. Uh, we're on the same page. And it's interesting how you can almost read somebody's mind when you're playing together in a lot of ways. I think the ultimate, uh, the ultimate place that happens is in jazz improvisation. I mean, I'm not a great improviser by any means, but, but the true jazz artist, you know, the musician that can, that can play anything on their instrument they can hear in their head, they're not thinking about the notes. They're not thinking about, they're actually speaking a language. So they're playing with a rhythm section, you know, and bass and drums and piano, and they're playing, and they're all talking and they're having this conversation. They're in their, they're uh, they're playing off of each other. It's not like, you know, when we're learning, you know, we're looking at the chord changes. We're going, okay, I'm going to make sure I don't play any wrong notes. Well, there's no conversation there. Well, there is, but you're having one by yourself. And if the drummer is not listening, then the drummer is going, he's talking to himself. Then you have four people not communicating. At the highest level, when all those musicians, they start reading each other's minds almost when they're playing. And sometimes it's, if you want to make a point. Like as a trumpet player, or you want to create some energy, maybe you play, you play, you play something loud, or you play something high, and the drummer reacts, boom, and he, he changes his thing, and the bass player digs in harder, and there's all these conversations that happen. But it's not just within improvisation, it's within written music as well. Classical musicians are, are listening to each other, and they're talking. And uh, in, in sometimes in big band, we do a funny thing, like, uh, like there might be a figure, and we call it... Uh, laying back or, or pulling the time backwards, like a, a, a phrase might go, ba do da ba do dat right? This phrase. A lot of times in big band music, we like to do things like go, ba do da ba do dat right? It's not written that way, but all I'll have to do is go, ba do da and I can lean over, and everybody, we all kind of know, we're going to do this. And to me, when that happens with like, 15 people at once, it always amazes me. How did we know that? How did we all know to do that? We'd heard another band do that, obviously, and we've heard this maybe kind of phrase before. So that's where the, uh, the imagery comes in. And, you know, and that's the ultimate for me. You know, when playing with somebody, I feel like, man, we're really thinking together. You know? and, uh, you, so you, have to, you can't play with, uh, they call it tunnel vision. You can't play with tunnel vision. You have to be, you have to be part of the painting you know, and not the star of the painting, I guess. You know? There's definitely like a telepathy thing going on between players. And, uh, and, and I'm not sure if that happens in sports. I don't play sports. But I imagine even a team, like baseball players and stuff, I, I imagine basketball players, fast-moving sports, they have to be thinking as one. You know, things are moving too fast. And that always amazes to me when you get to a level, a certain level at your craft, how things work like that. And uh, there's no way to explain it, really. Um, but even playing, you know, and it's also when you're playing with the same musicians a lot. When you're playing with new musicians, it happens as well. But when you're playing with your team, your regular, your all-star team, you know, you're playing uh, with the trumpet section I play all the time. We all know each other's playing. We know uh, our strengths, our weaknesses. I know how this certain trumpet player plays. So I understand if I'm playing second trumpet to, to him or her, I know how they're going to phrase this. I already know. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mold to them. Because if they're playing first, they're in charge. So I'm going to mold my style to them. I'm not going to fight them. Even, if I, even maybe if I feel like, oh, I might do that differently. 
it's not bad or good. It's just different. So I have to, to become part of that team. And, uh, and so we're all, we all have, we're all like-minded that way. When you have 100 people, like big orchestra, it's amazing how wh that's when the real music happens. You know, the other stuff where it's contrived, where everybody's just playing the notes, that's great. But it doesn't, it doesn't become this other thing, this artistic thing, you know, when everybody's working like a team. And that's the difference between, you know, a young, you know, college orchestra and a professional orchestra or a younger jazz band and a, and a professional seasoned band. There's, there's, a, there's something to be said for experience. And it doesn't mean that young musicians can't develop this quickly because there's many young musicians that developed, you know, in their 20s, you know, or even in their teens to be great musicians. Usually, though, the standard, the standard is you learn this stuff later and experience, you, you gain the experience over the years. The, the people that are very young and have this quickly are in the minority, that's, that's for sure. Hey.